my name is Father Larry Radice. I have been a millionaire since, well, I was ordained in 1985 uh, and had joined, I think it was in 1978. Uh, I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado, and uh, grew up on a kind of small farm or a, fruit, a lot of fruit farming in Grand Junction. So uh, my first mission was actually into Africa. Uh, and I went there as an OTP student. I've been interested in science ever since I was a, a small kid. Uh, I, having grown up on the farm, um, you know, um, the importance of, uh, you know, planting and how you plant a garden. I mean, solar energy is something that goes, you know, back to the, the beginning of human time, uh, and human beings have been using solar energy for forever. Uh, so uh, I would say that my first really strong interest was probably in uh, junior high school. I, uh, I, w I tried to make a solar cell that would work. I must have been about uh, 10 or 12 years old <laughs> when I uh, tried to make a, a working solar cell. Uh, that's sort of silly. but. Uh, so I've been interested in solar energy for, for a, a very, very long time. When I got to uh, Tanzania on OTP, we were having a, a, a period of what we say in Swahili, enja, or starvation, a famine. And uh, the people there were just uh, struggling so much, uh, was just getting cook anything they could do for cooking or for firewood, uh, but in those days too, we didn't have any kind of hot water. So I actually built a passive solar collector uh, for water uh, out of steel sheets that, that worked for a number of years. But uh, solar energy and my interest in solar energy goes back for many, many years. So during the uh, time that I was at Indo Leji, um, in Tanzania, uh, I saw that the women would uh, actually go out with these, uh, would go out to collect firewood, and they would walk seven kilometers, which is about what three miles, one direction, and they'd get about forty pounds of firewood, uh, and then carry that back, and that would last them a day, or well, a couple, two or three days. Uh, but uh, there was just I tried one project after another and nothing worked. Uh, and then I started, started praying, you know, what can I do to help these people during this terribly difficult time? And uh, I got the idea that uh, what would really be helpful is if uh, we replanted the forest around the area because women were carrying firewood long distance, the ground was drying up. Uh, so I thought, Planting uh, trees would be a very, very simple kind of project. Well, it was pretty naive. Actually, tree planting is a very complex kind of project. But it was uh, that uh, was that was one of the very first things I think that got me started down that road in my mission life, working with uh, farmers. Thirty-five years now, and ecology. I think, though, that was all rooted back in growing up on the farm, and maybe with my mom. Uh, we'd go out, she'd take us kids out hiking when we were young, and uh, she always taught us, leave the forest in a better condition than when you, when you leave the forest, leave it in a better condition than you went in. So we were always picking up trash and cans and bottles. Even when I was little, that was being taught to me. Uh, so I think that my mom's influence and in that experience and my first mission uh, really sent me down that road. The use of uh, solar energy, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is something that I've been interested in. And I was reading about it. Uh, I think it was actually, I remember reading something when I was a kid that it was actually, I think, in the early 1800s when they invented the first uh, solar cell, I mean, or put together and discovered that they can produce uh, a little bit of current. So if you think about the early 1800s, many people think of solar energy as something new and 
it's been around, this idea has been around for, for just about, well, well over 100 years. And by the 60s, uh, we had uh, amazing solar energy projects started, but the efficiency of the cells was not that great. Uh, but slowly it got better and better. And I always thought to myself, we have these huge parking lots all over uh, around Merino. Uh, and even before that, I was thinking, why don't we cover all our parking lots with uh, uh, solar panels? But certainly here at Merino, we could do that. And I wrote up a project. It was, I thought it was about 2005 that I wrote up a project and uh, proposed it to Mary Noel with um, some documentation, you know, and ideas about covering parking lots with uh, 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 solar panels. But a friend of mine recently, a Mary Noel friend, uh, said uh, that he remembers talk me talking about this in 2000. So I guess it's been on my mind for even longer than I remember, but I proposed it again, uh, nothing sort of happened, and then I proposed it again with another write-up about, boy, 2006 or seven, maybe 2008, uh, and filled out, and I talked to Dave Smith about that time, Father Dave Smith, and then he was, he sort of picked up the gauntlet, if you will, and. Uh, was proposing and working on that. So the idea has been around, not only with me, but with other millionaires for uh, some time now. But I just always thought uh, how nice it would be to have a covered parking lot that was producing energy and your car wasn't a, you know, 150 degrees or so when you got into it. Uh, that's, so that's been in my thinking for a long, long time. That's an interesting question. Uh, solar energy versus wind power. Um, I think that each one of those has their place in uh, the kind of proper situation. Uh, people often, I will hear them talk about the problem with wind power is uh, that it uh, kills birds uh, or that it mars the scenery or that uh, uh, the, the big windmills uh, produce a disturbing sound. Um, you know, I've done some reading on the uh, thing about windmills or wind generators killing birds, and um, the, I've read really, I'm not sure that's exactly uh, very accurate. And I lived in China where we have well, China has now become the largest uh, source or producer of wind power uh, in the world, having surpassed or uh, gone by Germany a few years ago. And what I noticed is in China is they put red bands around the fans or the, the turbine wings. And um, we don't seem to have problems with bird kill, uh, significant bird kill there. Uh, but you do see them sitting up on the mountain ridges, all these uh, uh, wind turbines, uh, but they do produce a lot of energy. Um, solar energy, I think, is uh, nice because it can be done aesthetically in a covered kind of parking lot or on roofs uh, so that it's not so, um, sort of, not so in your face kind of thing. Also in China, uh, Almost every roof in China, that, uh, at least uh, in southern China, every roof has passive solar heating on it. Uh, so, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions and millions of dollars saved in heating and so much less CO2 carbon footprint by doing that kind of thing. So I think both have their uh, place, but... Uh, Maybe aesthetically, like in a city kind of situation, solar energy is you know, probably much better. About, wow, 10, uh, 10 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago, another Mary Noel priest uh, did a research into geothermal uh, heating. And I've only done a little bit about uh, or is geothermal the right word? Uh, the heat exchange, uh, the, I think it's called geothermal. Yes, 
where you use heat exchangers to take uh, the heat out of the uh, earth in the winter time, but return heat to the earth and then cooling in the summertime. And I just picked up or ran into something that popped up on my uh, computer yesterday about that. And that uh, uh, it seems to be possible now to do it economically. And maybe that was the situation why nothing was done, you know, 20 years ago when I first had this idea is maybe these things had to reach a certain point of economic return uh, before they really became interesting. So something else that Mary Jo could do? I don't know. Maybe we start as, should start looking into this uh, geothermal uh, approach to some of our uh, 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 energy needs. No matter what we do here at Marino, whether you know any kind of energy project that we do here at Marino, um, I think it's very, very important that there be some uh, didactic or teaching element to it. That was one of the components of the project that I proposed. Uh, we have many, many people come through Marino. Uh, we're located where students and other people could visit the project here. I would hope that there would be a real strong uh, emphasis paid to this being uh, an exemplary model and a, a teaching moment, you know, uh, about caring for God's creation and by using this as a way to do it and its advantages, uh, you know, as far as comfort in a parking lot uh, and the energy production and real uh, honest uh, look at cost efficiency in it. I mean, let's be honest and tell people the, what's happening and where the positive points are, but maybe where some of the drawbacks are. Uh, because there's a lot of, um, I think, false information still going on about wind energy uh, and solar energy. So I would want this to be a really uh, something that benefits the community. New York State, yeah.